back. Let's try again for our Facebook Friday tutorial on decorative furniture mouldings. Now wouldn't that just break your heart? I set the time for one o'clock. I close the door of the shop to make sure that we're not interrupted. I'm ten, no maybe six minutes into the live tutorial and the internet decides I don't want to play today. So come back and join me. Hey I see one of you come back already. Um, you will absolutely love this. Um, I want to talk to you all about decorative furniture mouldings today. I want to show you how to use them, why you should use them, the different types that are available. Um, so thank you for joining me again. We'll get on with it just in case we get interrupted again. Now, I'm Aileen Hogan of Shabby.ie. I uh, manufacture a very large range of decorative furniture mouldings and um, they are made out of resin, professional grade resin. And they look like this when you purchase them. And, but they can also come in gold and silver if you would prefer that as a base coat for the additions you are going to add to it. So remember that when you order these on shabby.ie that you can request them in gold and silver. Now, um, also if you are a cottage industry girl, you are doing lots of uh, commission painting, you're buying a lot of paints, we also have this beautiful photographic calendar, not calendar, photographic uh, brochure on not not all but a lot of the mouldings so you can purchase one of these for your showroom for your clients and for yourself um, and they come with a price list the price is on the website anyway but you can see all the ones we do and some of them in use um, but here's a few examples right that I have here these are Regency corners right now this one uh, all they are is they're painted to match the furniture and then they're just sanded back to the original white cream colour. But look how effective that is. Isn't that beautiful? Now also in that one I have aged that with liquid bitumen. You can also use dark wax and you shove it right into the moulding and then with a baby wipe you take it all off the raised area so it only sits like dirt on the inner areas. Can you see that? See up here, you can see the dirt. But that's all about aging. And that's how that one is done. Okay, there's lots of different ways of using these. Then there is this one. And this one uh, has been painted up. And then it has Van Dyke brown glaze over it. And pearl effects. Pearl effects will give, if you can see there, gives a beautiful shimmer to it. Pearl effects come in small tester pots. We have, we've, we're nearly out of them actually at the moment, but we'll be getting them in again soon. This one is probably the version most of you tend to do. You paint it up and then you just highlight the raised areas. And if you see, hope you can see the gold. See the gold there? Now look at the difference between that and that. This is as it comes. And although you can see there's a lot of detail in it, you lose a lot of the detail and when you paint that up in one colour you can't really see any of the detail. This is the same with carvings on furniture. So you should learn how to accentuate the carvings on the furniture without making it stand out that it's the only thing you see, just the addition to your piece. So that's this one and all I did with, with that was dry brush a tiny bit of gold acrylic paint just on the raised areas, okay? So then we get into a little um, bit more decorative. And this is why I want you to start using these decorative furniture mouldings because they will make your work stand out from everybody else around you. And also, most of us as upcyclers are, um, are cre crafters, aren't we? And we wanna have a bit of fun when we're upcycling furniture. And when you're doing commission for somebody and you're working to a strict guideline, you can lose a bit of that fun sometimes. So adding mouldings brings it back because you can be very creative with them. Now, in the video where we just got disturbed a few minutes ago, I showed you I was working on this little one here. I'm gonna show you how to age that and give it a look of patina using gilding waxes and um, rub and buff. So have a look at this now. I did this earlier on, but for those who have missed it, um, have a look again now. I'm just gonna bend this down. 
right down like that so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, hope you can see there. I'm going to turn that tiny bit. Now, hope you can see. So all I'm doing is I'm taking two little pots of gilding wax. One is teal and one is copper. And I'm going to stick my finger in it like that. You think these go nowhere. Oh my God, they go so far. And just with my finger, I'm just going to dab on to the molding. Okay, anywhere and everywhere. And you can use as many colours as you like. Seriously, you just keep layering the colours. Because that's what ageing is all about, to show how the weather has affected the, uh, the different colours it was painted over the years. So that's the one colour on it. looks a bit of a mess. Don't worry about that at all, because we're going to now blend some of the copper. So same finger into the copper. And here we go. Now I'm going to rub the copper on just like this. And I'm going to hide some of the, uh, the very strong teal colour, but certainly I'm not going to hide all of it because I want some. That is patina. I want that colour coming through. But can you see already how much character this has? Now, it can still look a bit of a mess. You think, when is this going to come together? Well, this is what's going to bring it together. This is rub and buff. Um, actually, it's gold leaf. I want to use the uh, European gold. The European gold is a real dark gold. Um, we also have gold leaf and antique gold. This is a real dark colour. So when you rub this over it like that, that's hitting all the raised areas. And you can jab it into the recesses as well. But that really pulls it all together. Okay? And then I'm going to put... Uh, some no more nails on the back of that and stick it straight onto the furniture and I'll bring you over now in a minute and show you that But before we go over there. I want to show you how to get this look This is the rust look and how to get this look So this is exactly the same as I showed you a minute ago with this one here Where we just painted it up and we dry brushed it in a gold acrylic only this one I have painted it up in a dark chocolate and I have literally just put my finger into this little pot. I want to do it now for you and show you. And I'm literally just rubbing it over the raised areas. And that makes the whole thing pop like that. Very, very easy. And if you have some of these along the top or the bottom of your furniture, they are stunning. So that's that. And all you have to do to over the raised areas is a bit of rub and buff or a bit of uh, the gilding wax. They are both on the website on shabby.ie. But this one has a few more colours. This one was great fun to do. And I've started it off here for you. I've painted it up in a dark colour. Now I just chose um, dark chocolate because I had to hand, but you can do black or any colour you want, right? And you see these little spots of orange? Well, they kind of um, are to emulate um, rust. So I'm just hitting it in spots. A tiny little brush, a little bit of orange paint. You can use any acrylic, cheap acrylics you have. Just a little bit of orange, just like we did the gilding waxes on it like that. Okay, that's number two. Then we're going to go in uh, with our gilding waxes, but in different colours. This time I'm going to use a yellow. Okay, I'm going to use a brown. And I'm even going to dab on a little bit of purple. Okay. Um, before we go, we finally put the uh, gold leaf on. So exactly the way I showed you a minute ago, just jab on the different colours because only tiny bits of them are going to come through at the end. And if you actually end up hiding one of the colours that you really like, just come back and put it on again. Okay, so there's some of the purple. Okay, um, did I bring over? I'm just going to get my cloth. Hold on a second. Because... My finger's getting about 10 different colours on it now. Now I'm going to put a bit of brown. Right, I'm going to jab that into the recesses as well. Just like that. And then I'm going to go in with the yellow. The mustard shade. Love this shade. So I'm going to 
See how that's going to start to bring the bits to life? I'm, I'm jabbing it into the recesses as well as the raised areas. Now, see how that's starting to come together? So you might still think ah, a bit of a coloured mess. But again, what brings it together at the end is your rub and buff because it spreads so much better. So I'm just going to put some of the gold leaf on this one. Now you can use a few of the different golds. And then I'm going to rub it over the whole thing very lightly. And that gives you more of a one colour coverage, but all the other colours are still coming through. Do you understand? Now you can go back with any of the other colours and keep adding them until you get the look that you want. You can even go in with a little bit of sandpaper and bring back the original colour and age it by distressing. I'll come to any questions in a minute. Okay, so that's those ones. Now, if you decide to order some of the furniture mouldings in gold or silver, you also have um, much lighter coloured gilding waxes. They're all on there. So, how do you make silver pop? Well, you just use the lighter colours on them. And you rub them in like this and it just gives a beautiful sheen to the silver ones or dull it down depending on the look that you want. Now that is the resin mouldings. Okay, I'm going to pop you back up here so I can see you. Uh, that's the resin mouldings. Now, um, there's a huge difference between resin and, uh, let's turn this up again, between the resin mouldings and the rubber mouldings, right? The resin mold, the resin, the resin mouldings are rigid, totally rigid, right? But you can pop them into the oven for a few minutes and they go stay like a stale biscuit. So you can bend and bend and bend quite a long way before they finally break. And this gives you a chance to put them onto uh, curved surfaces. But if you don't want to do that, we have a range of bendy mouldings. And these, honest God, these look like carvings. When you put these on furniture, these are the best thing that you'll ever use. And you can see I have used them on the spine of books and I have used them on the front of the counter here. This big medallion here, right? And they paint up amazing. This particular one is one of our biggest sellers. And that now, so that's the resin version. And that also comes now in the bendy version, okay? So I'm going to just take you around the shop a little bit here. I'm going to plug that out. And uh, I want to show you uh, the ones that I've just done and added to, because on the last video that we got disrupted in, do you paint them before you put them? No, don't paint them before you put them in the oven. No, no, definitely not. Put them in the oven first. Get them because, okay, so say I wanted to add, wait, where's this one? One of my best ones. Say I wanted to add this one, right, to this curved table here. Can you see this curved table? Yeah. If I wanted to add that to there, right, I would put it in the oven, take it out while it's hot and while it's soft. I would then place it on the curve, hold it on there for a minute, and it goes rock hard within a minute. And then you, um, you, it's, it's in its new shape. And then you paint it up, obviously, to match your piece. Now, I, some people put them on before um, they paint. Some people put them on during or after. My preference is to put them on, if I'm only adding one, let's say, in the middle of a strip, I would definitely paint the piece first because I like to get a good long brush stroke or roller stroke and obviously having a moulding in the middle will stop that. Uh, but for this piece here, I'm just going to flip you around there. You see this table here? I'm bringing this to the uh, upcyclers day out that we have in Port Leash next week um, because I'm going to restain the top for the girls. I will have the bottom painted by then, but I want to show you um, what a rubber molding looks like on this. So this is the molding I will probably add uh, to this. I'm just going to try and put this up a bit on a stand so you can see, you can see there. Right, so this is the rubber moulding and I am going to place that on there. 
it's a perfect um, size gap to put a full stretch of molding. Now, once that goes on there, that will honestly look like that whole piece has a carving on it. So I think, Mary, you're coming into the day out next week. I know you are. <laughs> so you're going to see me do that. I'm going to have this painted. I'm going to stain the top, and then we'll add that to it. Now, the, uh, using this one, you have to use a different kind of adhesive. No more nails will not stick this because this is made of rubber. It's latex. So you need to use, I use a spray um, permanent adhesive or uh, cement, um, contact cement by Evo Stick, all of those work, but not No More Nails. This is No More Nails. That's what I use to push the resin moldings on. But I want to show you this. This is what I've just done today. Now look at this. Isn't that absolutely beautiful? I have to tell you, I think that is stunning. And all that is, is adding different ones. Like I've put, there's that one in the middle. And most of you would think you just use that one on its own. But I used that one. And then, let's see, I went over here, and this is the one here. Then I used these. And if they were too long, like this one here, for example, that's a full one there, right? But this one was too long, and it didn't fit in because I already had this in place. So I just broke off what I didn't need. But when you have them all painted the same and all done the same, you can't tell that they're not, uh, that, it, that it's broken. So... This, this is basically what I did. Now, you'd never think to put them together, would you? And then I just put a, uh, a scroll going down. And the one I've just done for you over there, okay, I'm just going to slot it there with my No More Nails. And then that whole area will be finished, as you can see. And up here, I added a beautiful, um, there's swags and bows, a full length strip. Isn't that stunning? And I did exactly the same. I did the patina look with the gold and the teal. And they really add to that piece because that piece was big and boring and an awful lot of wood. Um, so adding them to it made a huge difference. And this is what I want you to do, start using them. And here they are, of course, on the books um, that I did. So if you have any more questions, I want to turn this back around. If you have any more questions, please shout now. Actually, no, there's one more thing I want to show you for those of you who have never been to the shop. Here's that big medallion. Look on the front. That's this one here. And I've just put that on the front of the counter. Isn't that absolutely stunning? Just beautiful. So I'll be taking these with me uh to the day out next week so you can see me use the rubber one uh because not many of you um are using them at the minute and you'll be really really impressed when you do start using them um because they make your work stand out from everybody else's um but remember there's two types there's the efix bendable and there's the resin molding so these are the ones we manufacture ourselves so i hope you guys are going to uh start using these and give me a shout if you have any questions. In the Upcyclist Club, I have, of course, tutorials on using them, on dry brushing them, on how you add them. All the details are on the dashboard tutorials uh, in the Upcyclist Club. If you're not a member, uh, you can easily join. The link is on the homepage of the website. And uh, it's only 20 euro a month and you get a video tutorial every single week. So, thank you so much for uh, joining me today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.